All right, so what I'd like to do is demonstrate how you open something that's sterile. So for example, this is a laceration tray, but there are lots of different types of examples of sterile kits or trays that you might find in the clinical setting that are uh, important for that, that you open it a certain way. So you've got laceration trays, lumbar trunk puncture trays, uh, central line trays, different types of kits, and you wanna make sure that you open it correctly without contaminating the contents. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up now. And notice, I'm not being necessarily too careful at this point, because what I need is to get the part out that is in the wrapping, okay? So you can see this part, you're fine to touch the outside of this, but notice on this side there's a little tab that you can now pull out. So I'm going to use this cabinet here to demonstrate, but I'm going to set it down, okay? And then I'm going to pull on that tab to start to open this up, okay? And notice I'm going to pull that corner off to the side, give it a little tug, and I've got a couple other corners that now I can, just by touching the corners and the edges, I can open this up without touching the inside of this wrapping and without touching anything that's sitting there. So now if I was doing a true sterile procedure, for example, a mole removal, or I was about to do, let's say this was a lumbar puncture tray and I was going to use complete sterile fashion to do a lumbar puncture, then at this point before touching anything on this tray, I would need to wash my hands, put on sterile gloves, uh, depending on the actual situation, it might even require me to put on a gown and a face mask, depending on the procedure. But let's say we're doing a mole removal or something like that. Still, I don't want to touch anything. Got my patient ready. Looking at my, my kit, I want to make sure I've got everything open on top of this that needs to be sterile. And then I'm going to put on sterile gloves before I touch anything. All right, so let's say we have a patient who has a laceration, we've already done some cleaning, we've anesthetized the patient, uh, and, and we've irrigated and we've cleaned it out, we've gotten rid of all the debris, and now we're ready to suture. So the evidence would suggest we don't necessarily need to suture with sterile gloves, uh, we don't need to do full sterile precautions because that laceration was already technically contaminated when they walked in. So we've done everything we can to irrigate, clean it up, and I've opened my laceration tray that has everything I need now um, to close this. Now, I would actually need to open my suture onto this uh, tray as well without contaminating it. Remember, the goal with closing a laceration is to try to minimize the contamination. So now at this point that I'm ready to close, I'm gonna do everything I can to keep it as clean as possible with the exception of I don't need to wear sterile gloves. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on a pair of clean gloves at this point and show you the contents of this laceration tray. You can see I've got a drape. And you wanna open this up without having it run into anything else that's contaminated. Okay, so this sterile drape, fenestrated, it has a hole. And so without contaminating this, I'm going to now drape this over my patient's laceration. Okay, I'm gonna hold it in place. Now again, this is closing a laceration. It isn't a sterile procedure, but if I was doing a mole removal, I would need to do this, you know, a mole removal or another type of procedure where I wanna be as sterile as possible. I would be doing this with sterile gloves and careful not to touch anything because I'm now uh, I have a sterilized environment. So let me show you what else comes in your laceration kit. So um, you also get some towels generally. These towels are um, just small blue towels that are technically sterile when you open this up. So if you are wanting to create a larger sterile field, you can use these towels to help uh, provide that. Um, or extra barrier. And then you have uh, different forms of gauze. You've got little two by twos, some four by fours that you can use to do some blotting of, of blood as you are uh, doing the procedure or the sewing up the laceration. Additionally, a few different instruments that come in the kit. You've got a, a small pair of scissors for cutting sutures. Okay. You've got a needle driver for holding your needle while you're suturing. You've got a curved hemostat. Uh, sometimes you might need to, let's say we were using this laceration tray to uh, do an IND, an incision and drainage of an abscess. The curved hemostat can be used to break up inoculations after the incision's been made. Um, 
few different uses there for the cur curve team of stat. There's also the AdSense forceps here, so a tooth pair of forceps to use while you're suturing. Um, it'll come with a syringe as well, which can be used for irrigation if, if you need to do any additional irrigation, or it can be used to inject more lidocaine if needed. And generally a laceration tray, which of course laceration trays come in different styles by different companies, but come with a few different needles, one of them being a thick filter needle for drawing up lidocaine, um, and then a couple of other small needles for injecting if needed. Um, you also will see these uh, little cups most of the time in a laceration tray which can be used for holding uh, fluid or sometimes you might even dump a little bit of lidocaine or fluid into one of these cups or it might be used for holding your sharps, your, your needles at the end. Um, generally if you remove a specimen like removing a mole or some kind of a skin lesion, you'll place that directly from your forcept into a specimen container. But, so yeah, that's, that's basically what you'll find in a normal standard laceration tray. That's how you'll open it up, how you can use the fenestrated drape to place it sterilely over uh, laceration as you uh, are getting ready to suture. So thank you very much.